Hey Fly Tires, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying a pattern called the Brass Zebra. So as you can see, this is a bit of a mashup between a, a zebra midge and a brassy fly. So we've got three different wires coming on this and we're tying them in all together. So I've got a red and then two black wires. The idea is to try and get these in close touching wraps with the red kind of providing a little bit of separation between the segments here. So this pattern was designed by Dan Lechty and of course you want to be fishing this near the bottom. It's a fairly heavy fly with the wire body and the bead head. I'm not sure if you really need to go with a tungsten on this to get it down quick but it's uh, if you really need to get it down quick, throw a bit of tungsten on there and this thing will sink like nothing else. So let's have a look at the material list here and get started. Let's get a fresh hook in the vise. I'm going to be using a Mustad Signature C49S and just to kind of give you a better view we're using a size 10 but normally we're going to be tying this in some smaller sizes down to say like an 18 or so. So I've got a brass bead on here right now. This one is a 3.2 millimeter for the size 10. So you just want to use a bead that's appropriate to the size. For thread I'm going to be using a 6 aught black but if you're tying small you might want to go with a an 8 aught thread or something even smaller than that. So we'll just start by putting a little bit of thread on behind the bead and we're just going to make a really short base there and we're just going to use this to set our body material. So for our body we're going to be using some ultra wire. I've got two colors here. We've got some red wire and I've also got some black and the BR that's the brassy size and for this size of fly down to probably about a 16 or so the brassy size is a good bet. So what we're going to do I'm just going to cut three lengths of the wire here two black and one red. So we're going to start by tying the red in along the side closest to us. And then we're going to take the two blacks and set them just on the other side of the red on top of the hook shank and we're going to tie those in together. You can tie all three in together if you've got them set properly. Now the main thing is you just don't want these wires to cross here. You just want to give a bit of tension and then wrap back on them and you want to just make sure that the red stays on the side closest to you. So give those a bit of tension and wrap down with close touching turns and we'll go fairly well into the bend here and then we're going to wrap back with touching turns and right behind the bead. Next is probably one of the more important parts just to add a little bit of head cement onto those thread wraps and this will just help the wire adhere to the body of the fly. So we're going to take those wires and we just want to give them a bit of a gentle kink and then we're going to start wrapping those up. We want to make sure that you keep those all in the same alignment as you turn. You just want to make sure that they stay butted up against each other so that you're basically turning one wire instead of three separate ones. So if you do get a little bit out of line feel free to go back and fix that. And then we're just gonna finish that up just in behind the bead. Give a little bit of space that we can tie in a thorax for the fly. 
So this is about as thin as you could tie it. Um, if you're using a lighter thread, you could get a little bit thinner, but it's a nice thin chronomid profile. So you can either wiggle those wires off or take a pair of scissors and just cut them near the back. And we're just going to tie over top of those sharp ends there. So for the thorax on this, there's two ways I go. I can use either like a th synthetic dubbing, like an ice dub or diamond dub, or we're going to use a couple natural peacocks. So I've stripped two peacock curls off a natural eye. And we're going to tie those in by the butts. And I just like to clip off the butt section on there so we're not tying that in. And I like to tie my peacock curl by the butts because it's a little stronger rather than doing it by the tips. So we've got those secured. We'll add a half hitch just for a bit of an insurance policy there. I'm going to take both of those hurls. I'm just going to wind them a tiny bit. You don't want to put too much pressure on them because they could snap. And then we'll just take a few wraps just to build up a nice thorax. And we'll just make sure we tie those off on both sides, front and back, just so that they're locked in place. And we'll snip off the excess. And then we're just going to add a whip finish to this fly. So one other thing you could do if you wanted to, you could add a UV epoxy or UV resin over top of the wire wraps. But because we put a little bit of head cement underneath, this fly should stay fairly durable. And this is one of those flies that if you do happen to lose a couple, it's not too big a deal. They're a fast fly to tie. Hey fly tires, thanks for stopping by and watching my fly tying video. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell icon to get notified on the latest fly patterns, tips, and reviews. If you enjoyed the video, take a second and hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them below in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for your support of the channel, and until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.